I shot him. I thought it was like perfect. I was like, that is great, great Done. shot. Yeah. Done. And then he runs and I see my arrow because I have a lighted knock. I see that go flying and I'm like, oh no. Like, did what I just, just shoulder shoot this deer? Yeah. 100%. So this is our, we were just kind of doing like a pre-podcast before. This was between me and Dev. I came to the show like, 2018, 19 <clears throat> okay, as yeah. a consumer yep. and Painted Arrow started as a podcast. Like, oh, that was that's it. Cool. So then Devin and I had the idea for the products mm-hmm. and basically the first ever was the bow mount for the cell phone. The, mm-hmm. We call it the mag pro yep. that that's kind of taken us to like just a podcast too. Now we sell products, Yep. but I came here as a consumer and I had like a little rolling tool cart and I had a buddy, we just came here and I just interviewed people. Just yeah. walked up and said, hey, do you guys want to do a podcast? Like that was <clears> that was my first ever time at this show and I was blown away. Yeah. Just blown away by the, I don't know, that was the first real experience at a show that I ever had. So yeah. being here now, selling products, yeah. five Crazy. years, it's like very fulfilling deal. for me personally. But yeah, this is wild. Like we got a, we got a team, we yeah. got a product line, we're doing podcast. Like this is totally advanced in yeah. my mind. So. Yeah. Which is really cool. I feel like, I mean, I don't have like products like you guys have, but like very similar. Like I came here probably honestly, maybe even the same year you did like 2017, 18, something like that. And, um, like I had no plans for anything. I wasn't trying to like get sponsors or anything. I just was here to network and meet people and yeah. just kind of make some connections. And so now like having a booth is like kind of crazy. Like it's fun too. Yeah. And everybody's like, Oh, we got to come see you. And it's like, cool. Like, yeah, you know, the full circle kind of thing. And we feel like we're on tour in a weird <laughs> yeah, way yeah. <laughs> because we've been just like going from city to city <laughs> Yeah. and yeah, it's wild. But, um, so everybody, Caitlin Moss, um, would you do like a introduction for yourself? Because I feel like people ask me a lot, like at a wedding, like, Hey, what do you do? And I always like struggle to find a, like a good concise answer. And I didn't want to do it for you. So could you introduce yourself to yeah. the people listening? I feel like I also struggle with it. Cause I, I, I don't know. I just don't know what, um, cause you have, a uni- you have a unique line of work. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's very unique. Um, so yeah, I'm Caitlin Moss. Um, and basically I have a YouTube channel. Um, years ago when I, you know, kind of first started, like I never had any plans for it. I just, um, like I've always hunted and I've always loved like photography and, um, like my dad and I used to film very loosely film our hunts, um, just to kind of have memories. And I was like, well, if I'm going to film, I might as well put it somewhere. And so YouTube was just the platform for that. Mm. Um, and then I just kind of had a video go crazy viral and I was like, oh, I could maybe do something with this and mm. like kind of keep the mo- momentum. So, um, yeah, I grew up, I grew up deer hunting in Pennsylvania um, and I moved to Missouri for college. And so didn't know anybody out there and just was like, well, public land it is. So yeah. that's just kind of like what I started doing. And, mm. you know, I just had a video kind of go crazy because I shot a buck on public land self-filming, you know, and so yeah. like. I'm sure at the time it was just like a weird thing that people are like, oh, this chick's out here just hunting by herself. Like, it's yeah. weird, you know, but. What was the video? Um, it, uh, it was just, I don't even know what I titled it. Like, just a 10 point that I killed in Missouri, so. And it just went off. Yeah, literally overnight. It was weird, like, and it wasn't like crazy viral. I think maybe like 200,000 views or something, but it was literally overnight. And I was getting all these follows and messages and mm-hmm. I didn't put two and two together because I didn't even like consider that as like a a way to like I don't know I just didn't expect that I guess and yeah. so like I literally remember asking someone I was like how did you find me like where is all this coming from they're like oh your YouTube channel and I was yeah. like what and then I went and I checked it and I was like blown away and then I was like well and then you know I'm a broke college kid and like just hunting for fun and I was like well if I'm gonna hunt for fun I might as well try to make this into something yeah. So, yeah. so you know so like did you have a YouTube page like were you posting regularly on it or is this just like a random drop no. and it just went randomly viral i mean i so if we really want to get backstory i had a youtube channel that was like semi hunting focused when i was in like middle school mm-hmm. but i didn't really have anything on it like i said my dad and i kind of like for fun just filmed random things but right. it never was anything um and so like when i was in college and filming again i was like you know what i'm gonna try to get back into the youtube game and and so like i sort of did it but like didn't 
I wasn't fully experienced, so like I didn't kill anything right away, and so it was just kind of like, oh, I'll post when it makes sense to post. It wasn't like yeah. I wasn't trying until after the video that kind of took off, and then I was like, okay, like I need to lean into lean this. into, it. Lean yeah. into yeah. it for sure. So yeah, that's how that's how God works, though. Like saying we have very <laughs> similar story. Like you don't expect it. Yeah, you kind of have like the foundations of this you know, like things that you've done in the past that kind of like almost push you to this point And you're like, Oh, I guess we'll, we'll try yeah. that. And it, it is weird. Cause I, I was always like the kid growing up. Like if somebody said, what do you want to be? I would be like, I don't know. Like I never had like, Oh, I want to be a doctor or, you know, right, like right. I just didn't know. Like I grew up on a farm and had animals. So I probably would have said, Oh, I just want to be a farmer. But yeah. like once the hunting thing kind of like became something, I was like, well, you know what? I enjoy doing this. Like I might as well take advantage of yeah. it because I don't really necessarily know what else I want to do. So. Yeah. So let's take it. Let's take a step back. So you grew up in Pennsylvania. Yep. Was your father, did you mention that like, that's who got you into it? Like, yeah. what did that look like? Um, well, so I'm the oldest. I have a younger brother, but, um, when I was really little, um, my dad worked night shift, mom worked day shift. Um, but my dad's like a very big rifle hunter, which is Two mm -hmm. weeks. You get two weeks in Pennsylvania. Uh, in Pennsylvania. Yeah, yeah. And so, like, he would watch me during the day because my mom was at work. And, well, he's not going to miss deer hunting because yep. you only get two weeks to do it. So I had to go with him. And, yeah. you know, I I mean, like, literally, I, as long as I can remember, I was out in the woods with him. So um, that's just kind of, you know, how I got into it. And um, once I was in, like, middle school, um, I think crossbows became legal when I was, like, 12 or 14 or something so i had killed a few deer with um, a gun but um a crossbow was like easy for me as like a youth but to use um mm -hmm. but it also gave us more time in the woods yep. during archery season so um yeah that's kind of just like my intro into archery and then as i got older you know i started shooting compound and stuff but my dad and i learned how to archery hunt together that's awesome so, like that was kind of cool you know that's really cool so was was that what uh, why he got into archery hunting was to extend his season. Yeah, yeah, basically. for sure. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, to like, let me get out too, because he, he saw that I really enjoyed it. And, you know, like, I mean, yeah, two weeks is a very short amount of time. Right. And right. Pennsylvania is very, very tough. Like, there's so many hunters, like, just because you're out there even every day for two weeks doesn't, doesn't mean you're going to get gonna, something. Yeah. So it was like, this is just optimizing our time to maybe, you know, shoot shoot a buck. Have success, yeah. So I, so I got to imagine your father is probably... A, like very in favor of what you do and like cheers Proud. you on yeah first he fan. loves it <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's cool and i try to do at least like one hunt with him every year like i'll go back to pennsylvania for the late season like for sure because it's always a day after christmas so yeah. i'm home for christmas doing holiday stuff anyway so we always go out but like i've had him come out to missouri already and you know we're we're trying to trying to like just keep the tradition alive i guess a little bit and you know i enjoy it so so you live in iowa now yes why, what was the move specifically for work purposes? Yeah, I mean, Iowa is just like the, the where you dream be. white tail. Yeah, I didn't know if that was space. the reason or not. No, I mean, um, I lived, well, I went to college in Missouri, so I was there for like even outside of college, like five years, I think, total. And then I was working in Kansas City, so then I moved to the Kansas side so I could get residency to hunt instead of having to draw. Gotcha. So then I could hunt both sides. Yeah. So I lived there for a year and then Iowa, uh, my boyfriend and I were just like, he's from Michigan. So we were like, well, if I'm going to move and if I'm going to move, like, it's got to make sense. I was like, I'm yeah. not moving to Michigan. Sorry. But yeah. <laughs> and so it was just kind of like, why not? <laughs> Iowa is just our meat in the middle and it just makes yeah. sense because he also does like hunting. So, yep. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. I, I wish we could. I mean, I'm just like too invested in Michigan to move to Iowa, but I would. My yeah. God, I would in a heartbeat. Yeah. It just it's cool for deer, but I mean, I'll be honest, it's like boring. <laughs> I bet. There's nothing there. Yeah. 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 I believe it. Like all my friends even are like either in PA or like in Missouri. Mm. And it's like, I have to like plan trips to like go see to them. Go I can't stuff. just like, Hey, you want to go do something? It's like, I gotta. <laughs> yeah. Nobody wants to come visit you no, in Iowa. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, yeah. That's the thing. It's like people might visit, but it's like, well, what do you want to want to do? Huh? Let's go I look at the cornfield. Yeah. You want to drive around <laughs> the lease? I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's kind of what it is. Go shed hunting. Yeah. So. So you probably have told this story, but like you broke your leg, your ankle, right? Do you, are you okay sharing that story? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a good uh, teaching moment. And so I, I'm, I want to hear it because you, you hobbled in here and I, I don't know the full story and I, I kind of want to know. Yeah. So um, November 10th this, this year, year, this past okay. year, 
Um, and for reference, we're in February now. Um, so the Missouri gun season literally comes in over the rut and it's so annoying, but that I digress. So I bow hunt up until gun season comes in. So the 10th was the last day before gun season. Mm -hmm. And I had hunted when the season opened and then I went back home. So anyway, I hunted early season there and saw a lot of EHD, like bad. Yeah. And so I'm like, eh, you know, this is kind of sucks, but I left, came back for the week before gun season and I still wasn't seeing a lot of deer, like just in general, which is weird for that area. Like there's a lot of deer. So it was like, okay, this is kind of concerning, but I was in the tree uh, and I was like, okay, I'm going to sit till noon and then I'm going to get down and book it back to a spot that I've had like good luck in the past. So I was like, I'm going to sit till noon. So I like forced myself to stay in the tree. And because of that, I had to pee very, very bad. And so I'm like, okay, I, I need to get down. So I lower all my stuff luckily. Mm -hmm. And then it was just, I was in a saddle and I had uh, my, just my platform and stick still, but I was like, I got to pee. So I got down, went pee. Well, I took everything off, including mm -hmm. the saddle. Yeah. And I was like, ah, I don't need it. You know, like just to pull my sticks. And so I climbed back up and I had oh, five I sticks. I had five sticks. So you were up there quite a ways. Sort of. So I, I pull the platform, pull the top stick. And then I'm like standing on the second one, holding onto the third, trying to undo the fourth one. But I like spaced it a little extra somehow and I like could not get it to come apart. So I like step back up, yeah. undo it. And then this is just like my brain after hunting every single day for months. Like I just am not always on top of it. So yeah. like in my head, I'm like, okay, now I just need to step down. But I just undid this top stick and I like put weight on it and like relied too much on it. And yeah. I obviously shouldn't have, but I like went to step down and I was like, Oh crap! And I like held on to the stick that I just <laughs> yeah. undid from the tree. Just the natural like grab it <laughs> whatever like, you can. And like it was like so fast, but it was also like slow motion, so it was kind of a weird thing. Yeah. But like next thing I know, I'm on the ground. But I like fell and I landed on both feet and then mm -hmm. kind of just like fell back. And I just rem remember going like, ugh. And then I was like, did I seriously just do that? Like that was so dumb. Why did I just do that? And then I wasn't even sure if I was hurt. And yeah, I'm kind of like, like doing inventory, it was just like, like shock, you know, like yeah. just a shock wave. Cause when you're up, I think I was about 12 feet, give or take. Mm -hmm. Just, um, just far enough. Just like, far enough to, yeah, be bad. So, yeah. um, <clears throat> yeah, so I landed on my feet and apparently my left leg took the brunt of the, the impact because I fractured the, it's technically the bottom of my tibia, mm. but it was like right in the ankle joint and it kind of just like fractured upwards. So uh, well, thank God it wasn't worse, honestly, because it could have been. Yeah, which I mean, for sure, I'm I'm very fortunate considering the circumstances. Yeah. But wear your safety equipment because I'm usually very safe because I'm by myself like all the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Everybody. so it's like I'm always thinking about those things, but it was like the one time. It, everybody's, I mean, you know, I do it <laughs> many know. times a year. Everybody's like, there's just one time, or yes. yeah. Oh, I just do, this one same thing. tree, same everything. Yes. Maybe it's just. I'm you telling just, you. You just either get comfortable or you're trying to yep. be quick or, you know, whatever. Yeah. It's, it's just is what it is. But now I'm dealing with it. So, yeah. Lesson learned. <laughs> well, I didn't want that to be the whole thing, but I just I wanted yeah, to understand because yeah. I've, I've seen it a lot on your, your page and didn't really know the full backstory. So, sure. um, one, so we, we did try and do a podcast like a couple of months ago, a month, month ago. Um, about a month, I think. And yeah. we just got Starlink Internet. And that was kind of like a learning <laughs> curve. And we were, yeah. like, really excited because you were our first, like, remote. Yeah. And it didn't go well. Well, what's funny is I also have Starlink. So I was like, is it you guys? Is it me? It, yeah. Like, is it Boba's? I, I think we've done, drops. we've done some, like, remote stuff, but not the, like, the filming. So yeah, we were, like, yeah, trying yeah. to do that. Okay. So that might be, that might be, I don't know what it was. Yeah. But, but all way, that being said, working. I'm really yeah. glad that we're able to, like, set do this up person. and do this. Yeah, yeah. for um, sure. So we didn't really announce this in the beginning, but this is going to be, like, what we call a that one hunt series podcast so basically the guest shares a, a story of a hunt that really meant a lot to you for whatever reason maybe it was yeah. the biggest deer maybe it was the smallest deer maybe it wasn't a deer maybe it was you know i don't know maybe you, we've maybe had you didn't all kill anything. a squirrel yeah. exactly yeah. <laughs> we've had all sorts of different stories but yeah. um wanted to give you an opportunity and we do this thing in the front we call it the hunter profile okay so it's just a couple of quick like quick hitters you oh. can go as quick as deep as okay. you want 
or just you to, like just to qualify one, the guest, I guess. Yeah, yeah. It, okay. it's, it's not these aren't like complex questions or by any means, but you can go like I said, as as deep or as not as you want to each question. Okay. Um. <laughs> so the first question: How long have you been bow hunting, and uh, how did you get how did you get introduced? You already mentioned kind of half of that, but how long have you been hunting? Um. <clears throat> well, like I said, I kind of started with a crossbow when I was fourteen, I think, um, and I'm about to be twenty eight, so a while, but. When I got my first compound, I think that was 2016. Yeah. Yeah. So long enough. Nice. Long enough. Yeah. 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 Eight years. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to try and do the math, but I didn't want to. Yeah. It's too early for that. (laughs) Um, And then what boat do you shoot today? Um, I have a Matthews Prima currently. Gotcha. How long have you been running that? Um, Well, this is technically technically my second one because I do bow giveaways every year if I can. Um, Yeah. But... I have had the same bow because the last one they dropped wasn't in my draw length. Um, But I think three years with both of them. Yeah. Nice. Do you have a specific broadhead that you just love? You know, I mess around with those quite a bit. Um, Just because I'm a lower poundage, I like to kind of experiment and just see what works best with my setup. I've I've shot, I mean, muzzies, slick tricks. Currently, I'm running Rex. Yeah. Mm. Um. So I, I really like those. I'm, I'm a big four blade fan. I like having a nice hole regardless of where I'm hitting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and yeah, I mean, they've been pretty good. So yeah, we like rec too. Yeah. And Matt's a really good guy. Which yeah. I love Matt. Yeah. You, you like to support the people who are good. For sure. Good to you. Um, what's your favorite species you hunt? Oh, I mean, white tails for sure. Yeah. You just, yeah. yeah. You live in Iowa. Yeah. I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have like a specific dream hunt? You know, I, it used to be caribou with a bow. Like I wanted to shoot like a giant caribou, but, Mm. um, I have recently been exposed to moose meat Mm. Yeah, and it is like by far my absolute favorite. Like I would take it over a beef steak even. So like, I really like moose and I mean, who doesn't want to shoot a moose? So that's kind of like more, I think on my radar, but bucket list. Yeah. Yeah. I got like this fireplace thing going on in my house and there's a perfect spot for a moose head <laughs> just waiting and i'm like man we got to do a moose hunt yeah. like yeah. just to get something like huge yes. just yeah. gigantic yeah so yeah i like that answer um so after like all the obvious stuff we talked about a bow broadhead um camouflage like what's your like you're not going in the woods without this one thing like the most important thing like you Piece don't have to speak you know you don't have to speak to any brand necessarily if you want you can but like what's something that you just really value when you're hunting um truthfully onyx um the maps because not that i would say i need it but um i've just learned a lot by like paying attention and marking things down um especially like on public land like just paying attention to the littlest details and i'm really big on um trying to like paint the full picture and even like year after year like if i go back like when i go to missouri i hunt pretty much like the same general area so like mm-hmm. being able to like look back at like historical information yes has been huge yes. yeah so like yeah, yeah. i love it for that you know yeah we're all about like documenting whether it be yeah. journaling whether it be podcasting yes. whether it be on x whether it be whatever like yeah those data points long year term, over year, year over yeah. year yeah like typically the same types of deer do the same types of thing and yes. you build like that's how you grow so sure. I, I love that answer because usually you know that's it's the like, first one we got yeah, like that usually it's like my binoculars yeah <laughs> yeah oh, which yeah, is yeah. a great answer too but anyway. yeah no i i mean yeah your gear is good but it's like yeah. i don't know i'm just i'm like when i go hunting <laughs> i'm very like strategical and i'm like okay what you know what can i do to like benefit myself and like how can i outsmart this deer you know like whatever yeah. so like i'm always like my brain's just processing constantly, and that's just on X Lake helps me lay it out. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. So this is the last question, and then we're gonna get into this hunt. Okay. Um, it's kind of a deep one. Oh gosh. Okay. And it's really simple. It's why do you bow hunt? Oh man. It can be a deep question. It doesn't have to be. Yeah. Though. For me, that's a deep question. Yeah. Like I couldn't sit here and unpack <laughs> it in ten minutes. I don't yeah. think. Okay. I'll. So simple answer. Um, I think I bow hunt because. Growing up, I've only I only rifle hunted till mm. you know I was a little bit older, um, and I feel like when you bow hunt, you really truly learn the animal that you're hunting instead of like oh he's 400 yards out, let me just shoot him. No, like you have to get within bow range, and yeah. so like there's a lot more behind the scenes kind of stuff that you have to like think about in order Strategy, to yeah. to get 
within range and I think that is like really cool and like I said my brain is just always doing this so like that is fun for me um and like yeah I mean like I really like hunting but like bow hunting to me is just like I don't know it's just another thing it's so cool it's primal yeah and I mean yeah like the 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 best answer I guess is like just being in the woods is just like my therapy like I just love going out and just figuring it out like if I mess up especially like I like hunting alone truthfully because I'm <laughs> yep. like okay I, nobody else can mess me up if I screw it up like it's, it's a me. lesson learned it's on me kind of thing and I just I don't know I just I love doing that so it's those like foundational like moments that you have by yourself yeah. it's almost religious yeah. it is in many ways where yeah. you're just like yeah you're experiencing these things and for you and your line of work yeah and in our case our line of work now like we're trying to capture those moments to share them like right. they mean so much yeah. yes a yep. million percent you know what i mean so i think that's yep. really special i love yeah. the answer so i want to get into this hunt yeah i have no idea Devin has no idea <laughs> maybe you don't have any idea but we hope you do by now <laughs> but we we love dissecting these so we're gonna like politely interrupt you and like just like ask all the quick detail. little detail yep so okay. the floor is yours that one hunt caitlin moss okay and so wtf show day one let's hear it yeah so <laughs> that one hunt um and i'm sure people watching have probably seen it um it's my swoops hunt mm. and the reason being um yes he's a big deer yes he's a mature deer and he's cool and all these things um but he's He's a meaningful deer to me because, um, like I said, I'm always, like, I just want to, like, figure it out. And up until, like, very recently, I feel like I've struggled a lot. And for one reason or another, like, I feel like I'm always, like, so close. But, like, I might have a deer. Like, I had a deer um, a few years ago who was a giant. I had him at five yards under me, and I, like, could not get turned around to get a shot on him. And it was just, like, one of those, like, just so disappointing because I'm like I'm so close like I just need this like to come together like I did like, the work I yeah. got on the deer but it yeah. was like I couldn't make it happen yeah. so swoops was like my first like <laughs> real full circle like I did it kind of moment 100% and so like regardless of he's a great deer but like regardless of that it was just like okay this is this is like I I can actually like prove that I know what I'm talking about you know so yep. like yep. and that's important to me mostly because like I am filming and like um, trying to like tell the story of like my haunts but at the same time like you do have to kill stuff to like be credible <laughs> so yep. like swoops was just that deer for me got it um so yeah that was that was a 2023 season so last year yep so what like what was the first time you saw him like give me give me as much information as you can remember like how did the hunt start and just go into it so i uh knew of him the year prior um this is a lease in Iowa that I have. And there were four of us on the lease at the time. So first year having the lease, four of us all new to Iowa. We were just kind of like yeah. cautious on how to hunt the place, which first of all, there's not a lot of timber to begin with. So we were all trying to like not step on each other's toes and like hunt over top of each other. And it was mm -hmm. just like a whole thing of like figuring the place out. Yep. Um, so swoops we knew of. Um, Why did he call him swoops? Because his main beams literally like swooped up and they were like level with the rest of his tines. Like it looked like another tine. Like a so Nike, like he, a Nike swoosh. Yeah, yeah, literally. So I was like, that is swoops. <laughs> um, but it was interesting because he was just like a big eight point with kind of some junk, but nothing like crazy other than his, his main beams were mm -hmm. like insane. Um, so yeah, he was like semi on the radar, um, but you know, like. I said we were trying to like be cautious and not really step on each other's toes and um we all had like our own trail cameras that we put out and then it was like communication wasn't the best and it was like okay if a deer would show up we might be like oh hey by the way this deer is over here you know yeah. so there's four of you four how big is this parcel if you're okay sharing that? um a little over 600 acres okay, okay. So but like i said it's a lot of like ag field so there's like one main um chunk of timber and then it kind of branches out a couple fingers and yeah. some ponds but like aside from that i mean it's mostly ag stuff, okay so so i'm there i'm there now yeah. i'm like i'm there it's like it sounds like a drainage for field crop stuff yeah a little bit bigger but i mean like there's a creek bottom that runs it um sometimes there's water in it sometimes there's not so seasonally okay yep. um so yeah that's and you got pictures of this deer like how old do you think he was the first time you saw him that's the million dollar question because when we first saw him i thought he was four 
And I, to this day, I don't know because um, there was a mix-up with the taxidermist when I did kill him. He was supposed to send the teeth in and never did. So I, oh, I don't sucks. actually know. But yeah. um, when I shot him, like, literally the biggest bodied deer I've ever seen, like, easily pushing 300 pounds. Like, Holy cow. big deer. Now, yeah. we are in Iowa, so that's something to consider, too. But right. at the same time, like, that's a even compared to other Iowa deer, like, he's big. So I don't know if he was, like eight years old or if he was you know five like at I least five know. i would assume so and yeah. that was what year so f- when he was four would be 2022 yeah killed him 2023, 2023 when i i don't know five or seven or ten eight. i don't know like he could <laughs> yeah, literally could be whatever. Yeah. at least five at least five at least five yeah yep. okay so you're going into you, you get you know the, of this deer so what I, is like what do you what is your next steps like what are you doing well the the first year um it was a mix up in communication kind of um one of the guys had had some cameras out like just kind of like where this deer was at um and where he was showing up is not the camera that i thought he was showing up on so i'm like going in to hunt this guy and then turns out he's like not even there and i didn't Mm. know that i'm thinking i'm like right where he's at i'm like i'm i'm here (laughs) i'm just waiting to waiting for him to come by and it just never happened i never saw him in person and i'm like what am i doing wrong you know like this is frustrating but like it was just a mix-up in communication. It was, you know. So, anyway, that was that year. Fast forward, um, pretty much this year I have it to myself. Like, all those other guys um, aren't on it anymore. So, I was like, okay, I'm actually going to, like, strategize. Because he was fairly regular. Like, even though I was at the wrong camera, like, he was still, like, showing up pretty regular. So, I was like, I think I can pattern him and, yeah. and kind of get on him. Um, so then I put my own cameras out and then was able to kind of watch and sort of figure out what he was doing. Um, and like I said, um, the property is not a lot of timber. So he was pretty much hanging out on the south end. The neighbors have a bunch of like just thick cedar patch, mm-hmm. like nobody hunts it kind of thing. So it was just all bedding. So he yeah. would bed south and then work that finger like north and kind of just go yep. from there. Brain so shot, yep. I knew it was just like in there. Um, and... I only actually ended up hunting him, I think, three days until I killed him because um, I knew he was betting south. And then I had a few cameras kind of like randomly, um, not randomly, but, you know. um, Dispersed. Dispersed. And I had a tree stand. So the way the timber is, it's like it literally branches out from the neighbors and then kind of opens up a little bit. But then there's also like a finger that comes like east to west. Yeah. And I had a stand right in that corner. And I was like, I have I had a camera there too and he would he would show up fairly regular and um like early October even he was like daylight like an hour before dark. So I'm like, okay, wow. I need to like make this happen. But I didn't know how he was getting from A to B. I knew he was here and I knew he was here. Yeah. But I I'm like, okay, is he walking the field edge? Is he going up, you know, the woods? Yeah. Is he going somewhere else and then coming yeah, around? So through. I was like, I don't know. So I decided to do an observation sit and just kind of like sit, sit back. back. And I literally like sat on the property <clears throat> line, just like way out, like enough that I knew I could see and potentially be in the cards. But I was like, I'm not trying to yeah. kill him. I just want to see what he's doing. Um, and what day was that? Like October? Yeah, October. I killed him October 13th. And so that was probably 11 or 12. Mm. Wow. So he was living there. He was living there. Yeah. So, yeah, okay. He owned the place, very homebody. Like, even the year before, like, we would we would have him on camera, but, like, same cameras. He wasn't venturing up here. He wasn't venturing. Like, we'd have other deer and stuff. But He it, might have been a really old deer because you hear people talk about yeah, how they shrink their yeah, core area when they're really or, old. Be. Like, he might have been really old. Could like, be. Like, the 13th is just early like he's enough just where right it's, like, there. yeah. 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 Okay, so you're sitting there on the property line. Yep. Yep. And... It was one of those days that I was like, I just have a good feeling. Like, I just, I think he's going to do what I think he's going to do kind of thing. And, mm-hmm. and I'm sitting there. And it was crazy because, um, like, on the property line, there's so many trails that come out. And I was trying to, like, stay off him. off him. But also the way the topography is, it was, like, big hill. And so I couldn't go, like, over the hill. But I also didn't want to be, like, too close. And so I'm, like, kind of up on the hill, and then there's does, like, coming out right underneath me. And I'm, like, oh, my gosh, they're going to win me. Like, this is terrible. I'm going to blow it before it even -hmm. even happens. But luckily, like, it was just meant to be, I think, because, like, I had deer, like, downwind of me. And they just kept going. I'm, like, okay, yeah, just just get out in the field kind of thing. 
So, um, yeah, sure enough, like, like clockwork, really. He, he came out, did exactly what I thought he was going to do, worked the edge, and then there was, like, a big scrape. There's actually a grapevine, and there's a big scrape. Like, every deer uses it kind of scrape. Yeah. And uh, there's a trail that cuts down, and he literally walks out, hits that, cuts down in and then i get a picture of him so i was like okay that's what he's know doing how he's doing it yeah and that scrape was roughly 36 yards i think from my tree stand that was up there and did you you knew of this social scrape area when you set that stand yeah 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 for sure okay. it's, it's just a really good pinch point i mean like i said the timber's kind of narrow and they an they obvious run it. Yep. yeah tree uh terrain feature yep so when i when i hung that i wasn't necessarily targeting swoops but you know it was a, it was a good a, spot, a huge you know? attraction. Yep. So, um, yeah, so I got that picture, and I was like, okay, that's what he's doing. And so the next day, literally, it was, like, meant to be for sure because, like, the next day it was, like, same conditions as the day before or two days, whatever. I forget <clears> how many days was in between, but, um, like, same wind, same, like, temps, like, everything. pressure. Everything was the same. And I was like, he's going to do that again. Like, he mm-hmm. has to. So, uh, yep, I sat there, and um, – I don't know, just kind of one of those things. Like he he comes working out, and I was like, oh my gosh, like I can't believe this is happening. And the wind was good for the set and everything. Perfect, like yeah. literally, like so. I pretty much had my wind blowing out like that edge of that finger because it's like steep ditch. Like not a lot of deer use it, so I felt felt good doing that. And I mean, he likes or liked the west winds because he could walk that edge and just scent check the whole way up. He, you know, walking that. So mm-hmm. I was like, he's gonna do that again. And sure enough, he did. And actually, I was, like, so scared because he comes walking up, and he gets maybe, like, 60 yards or so. And then all of a sudden, he jets out into, like, the middle of the field, turns around, and is, like, facing away. And I'm like, what is he doing? And he's, like, tails up, and he's flagging. I'm like, oh, my gosh, like, coyote or something. I don't know what it is, but he's, like, locked on something. And I'm like, this is it. Like, now my hunt's over kind of thing. But he, like, just stood out there forever. And I was like, okay, well. I don't know what else to do. So it was getting like pushing dark and I'm like, I need to like try to do something. So I grunt at him. He ignores it. I grunt again and he kind of like turns and looks and I was like, okay, just like come over. And sure enough, he comes like straight, like beelines to like the West, of course, like where the wind is. But at that point, my thermals are kind of sucking down. So I like wasn't totally worried and he hits a scrape and then he like comes walking in and I just like kind of ranged i was like i don't know where he's gonna walk but i like guessed there's just like a little bit of corn stubble or bean stubble and i was like he's gonna walk right there and i ranged it 28 yards and sure enough he like walks exactly where i range it mm-hmm. shoot him and it was like perfect and i was like oh did my you gosh. see him go down like in sight so no so this is like i was so like terrified i shot him i thought it was like perfect i was like that was great great done. shot yeah done and then he runs, and I see my arrow, because I have a lighted knock. I see that go flying, and I'm like, oh, no. Like, did what I just, just shoulder shoot this deer? Yeah. And I'm like, that's it. I'm done. I'm never seeing him again. Like, I was so <laughs> sad. And I'm like, how did I do Like, there's no way I did that. And so he runs off, and it's like I'm, like, listening, and I hear coughing. And I'm like, okay, like, I guess that's good. Like, I hear coughing. But I'm like, I don't know how much penetration I got. Like, did yeah. I single lung him? You know, like, I was like... So I waited till like way after dark. I get down. I look at my arrow and I think I had, I think there was like eight inches left. So there was like roughly 10 inches that got snapped off. And I'm like, okay, well that's good. But I still don't know where I hit him at this point. So did you have it filmed? Yeah. This whole thing. You couldn't, could you see like, like when you're up in the sand? It It was just dark enough. And then the lighted knock just kind of like was glowing so and this it was, was like right at last light yeah i had three minutes of legal light left wow yeah i hate that i know <laughs> i that's why i like hunting in the morning because yeah. i'm like yes <laughs> that gives me so much stress and anxiety i know i was so like I, uh, now what you know so yeah i checked the arrow and i'm like i'm just gonna let him go overnight it's cold enough like get out safe, of here better safe than sorry yep. so then i didn't sleep of course and then come back the next day and um, Did you have, like, a crew coming with you? Like, we're going to go find this No, year? I was just by myself. Really? Yeah. Wow. So then I go... So then I go... Well, where the arrow was, I left it in the ground. So I start there. And I'm like, okay, well, I know where he ran. He ran down the freaking grapevine trail. Mm. So I'm like, that's my starting point. I didn't have any blood, which now that I... Like, after I had found him, I didn't have a pass-through. So I was like, okay, 
You're probably not internally. gonna have a lot of blood. Yeah. So I kind of just like inched my way down in, and I'm like, oh my gosh, like please be dead, you know? And literally not a speck of blood, and I'm like, gosh dang. So luckily the timber's not very wide, so I just kind of like went to where I last heard him like coughing, and I was like, that's he's got to be like. Whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> you heard him coughing the day before. Well, yeah, when I shot right him. After she Can shot you give him. us like an impersonation of what you thought that you heard? <coughs> literally like. <coughs> Just coughing. Wow. Coughing. I don't think huh. I've ever heard a deer cough. Me neither. And so I was like, Me, is that a good either. or a bad thing? Yeah. I've heard a deer sneeze. No, he was like coughing. Full on coughing. Blood, was, I'm assuming. Yeah, blood in his lungs. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. <clears throat> but it was weird because I'm like, well, I would assume that means long. But then I was like, was it single long? You know, like, I didn't know. So I was like, I'm just going to play it safe. But. Yeah. So anyway, I would go back to where I heard him in the general area. And sure enough, he, he only ran like 80 yards and he was, he was laying there. Piled so. Up. Yeah. yeah and then uh, sorry, go ahead. But then the shot, like I rolled him over and literally my arrow is like barely like it didn't pass through, it was just like poking out the other side. But he was like such a big deer, I think I, I just like didn't have the energy to get through. But him. you smoked him. But I smoked him, yeah, smoked it was him. perfect. And he was stiff. Dead. And I think the arrow snapped just <coughs> kind of when he took off. Yeah. So that happens a lot. Yeah. More than you'd think. Like yeah. you, like the it on the It's crazy stroke like the force, back. but yep. yeah. So I, I've watched that video, and but now hearing you talk about it and say what the deer meant to you, like when you're walking up to this thing. Did you see and me crying? I think I did, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think but, I saw but, that yeah. more, yeah. <laughs> but, but what I'm saying is when you're walking up to this deer, like I got to imagine it's just a flood of emotions. Yeah. Like I oh, yeah. did it. Yes. I did it. A million percent. And it's just like to me, you know, I've been deer hunting my whole life, but like it's really cool to have like a mature deer like that and be able yep. to like – beat him at his own game you know because like that was the, like i've killed a lot of deer but like to to have like a big mature deer like that and be able to figure him out and have it like just full circle come together yeah, like that was like you called the shots sat back when you needed yeah. to and then went into his bedroom and yeah, killed him and it made it it just made it so worth it so yeah. that was really cool and yeah i for sure cried for a while <laughs> so like the hunting industry and i say this like we're the hunting industry so the hunting industry, I feel like it, it does a poor job of explaining how difficult it really is. And the fact that you shared this story and you said specifically, because it's like a full circle thing for you. You you yeah. did the, the the scouting in front, like you did the whole thing. Yeah. And like, that's something that Devin and I talk about a lot too. It's like, we want to come become better hunters at doing that, at patterning like a deer being selective and yeah. harvesting like the deer that you want to take that is like good for the herd good for you good good for yeah, everybody yeah. so like in terms of i guess my question is is like what would you say to somebody who's listening that maybe is not in the hunting industry and just sees everybody shooting big bucks like what's what's the message i guess for those people that just want to do what what you're just sharing that story oh gosh um because i feel like you know what i'm saying I yeah. feel like everybody's just media, shooting big deer. A lot of media covers only the wins. But, like, I yeah. think in general, your content, like, is a little bit more of a diary. Show the good, bad, and the ugly. And yeah. this is this was this year. This was this hunt. You know, and it's just this yeah. is what happened. It's and sure. I, hard. I respect like it's hard that, to do that, that transparency. Like, Yeah, and, I mean, I, I don't know if I necessarily have, like, one takeaway for somebody. But, like, my content, for sure, I try to show the good, bad, and the ugly because, like, that's the reality. And I've always been that way, like even if I say live or shoot a deer, like yeah. I'm going to show it because it, it does happen. And then what I try to do is like be informative. Like, okay, if you, if this does happen to you, like these are the steps to like optimize like the, the result, you know, yes. like yeah. don't go bumping him right away. Like you, you shoot a deer, you want to get it, you know? <clears throat> so I try to, I try to like not educate, but like kind of just share my story and kind of take people along for the ride, I guess. And I think we really respect that because, like, our mission has been helping people recover more game. That's yeah. the only reason we started making the product was I specifically liver shot a deer. Yeah. Tracked him too early, jumped him out of a bed. Mm -hmm. And I was like, if I had been filming my hunt yeah. and I had known where I hit that deer and I, I let him go the proper amount of time, yeah. he'd have been dead in that first bed. Right. Likely. Yeah. And so I'm like, I'm going to start filming for no other reason than recovery. And sure. that's like, that is, I, I jumped in the truck that night, threw my phone up on the magnetic dashboard mount I had. And I was like, huh, huh I bet I can <laughs> make literally, something. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and, and, and since then, we've just tried to make that the mission is helping people recover more game. Because showing your buddies the deer you shot is cool, but yeah. it's a lot cooler to find them. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. So. That's a good reason. Yeah. Yeah. I love, I love it. 
I want to see. I, I want to go see this deer now. Yeah, you need to. The other thing that is like special to me with him is like, I've hunted public so much, but that is just such a different animal. And so like, now having a deer on a lease like that, that I can figure out what he wants to be doing as a mature buck. I feel like that's like such vital information that I can apply to other deer and like mm. even out on public. It's like, okay, well, what what would this deer want to be doing versus like. You know, like, oh, I'm just hoping that something's here, you know, like, so hunting him has been like just key, I feel like for future hunts too, because I've just learned so much. Yeah. 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 I didn't usually like, I'm, I'm different when I, when I have a podcast guest come on, like I don't look into them at all. Yeah. Like, I don't research. I don't, like, I just like want to have a conversation and not like know the thing that we might talk about. Yeah. So I'm going to go watch the video now. That was my <laughs> one point with that. <laughs> okay. But, um. Yeah, so we kind of usually end and wrap up these episodes with like a what what's one thing that maybe younger Caitlin wishes she would have known now. Like what's one thing you could tell yourself? Mm-hmm. If there's like one key lesson or one key <clears throat> I don't know, thing that you've matured over the years from hunting, like what what's that one thing you'd tell your younger self? Gosh, that's tough. Um I mean, truthfully, I think I would say um, maybe, like, quality over quantity when it comes to, like, your sits. Mm. I used to just go sit every single possible day that I could in the woods, and I probably blew out the deer that I was trying to maybe kill instead of, like, honing in on, like, okay, let's look for the signs and, like, where is he actually betting versus where I think he might potentially be betting, you know? So, like, paying attention to that kind of stuff I think is, like, super vital, Um, especially targeting one specific deer. Um, because they do have their own unique habits and, and things that they like to do maybe that another deer wouldn't do. So just like paying attention and just, you know, making your time count versus just getting in there and hoping you shoot something. Yeah. 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 That's, I need that lesson. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cause I, I mean, that. I still have to like tell myself like, okay, let's, let's reel it in. You know, like you want to be in the woods, but it's like, you know, let's, let's make it count. Cause otherwise you, you could blow it before it even starts. hundred percent. That was a tough concept for me to. Like, it is tough. Sometimes the best thing you can do is go not go hunt yeah. today. Yeah. Like, and that's <laughs> that's so very, it doesn't, very it very doesn't jive with my personality. Right. right. Yeah. Like I'm a go man. Yeah. Let's go. Yes. Let's Time do on it. stand. Outwork. Outwork the competition. Yeah. But it's like sometimes you're just shooting yourself in the foot to yeah. go do that. So. For sure. Anything else? I'm gonna move away from that this deer. But is there anything else that you want to mention about it? Anything that comes to mind? Anything we didn't touch on? I don't think so. Just go watch a video if you want. Okay. So. What's uh, it's just Caitlin gonna, Moss on YouTube? I'm right? gonna get That's to that. Yeah, Caitlin Moss it. Outdoors and the video, like it's swoops. Swoops. <laughs> what What's next for you? Like what's What's like What does the next year look like? Is there anything specifically you're you're gonna be putting out or anything you're excited about that you're working on? You know, um, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, there's a lot of stuff I kind of have in the works. Um, I mean, like the the near future, obviously, is turkey season. Um, I'm gonna do a slam tour this year. Mm, um, try to that. try to shoot all the subspecies of turkeys. Um, so Florida is where I'll start, and then for the Osceolas, I think Eastern. I mean, I have Easterns in Iowa, but I'm also doing Illinois. Rio is going to be in Texas, and then Miriams. I haven't decided, but um, maybe like South Dakota ish area somewhere mm. over there. Um, That's like I, not a small endeavor. No, it's not. Well, no, but I I always do a turkey tour every year. Um, Mm. but it's just usually like Midwest. And I was like, you know what? Like, I kind of want to shoot, like, you know, broaden my horizons (laughs) a little bit and, Mm -hmm. and, and try to shoot the speed, each of the subspecies. So that's cool. That's, that's the near goal. Um, but yeah, as far as like fall, I don't really have it planned out other than, um, I think what I might do is go back to Pennsylvania, um, and try to do some public land stuff there because, you know, I've been I've been spoiled in the Midwest, honestly, for mm-hmm. the last couple of years. And I I do go hunt with my dad late season, but I haven't been regular archery season in a long time. And a lot of my following and, and um, audience is from the Northeast because that's where I'm from. So Got it. I think that would just be a cool like back to my roots kind of hunt. Yeah. So that might be something I do this year. Otherwise, you know, for sure, the next couple of years, I'll I'll go back and do that. Um but yeah, I, I mean that's it's kind of where I'm, I'm excited at. for you. I want to go to Texas and hunt a Rio. <laughs> You're more than welcome to. I I know somebody. <laughs> wait, wait, take you up on yeah. that. <laughs> um, and then yeah, plug 
plug all your stuff. Like, <clears throat> where, where can, can people I find, find you? you? Um, YouTube is uh, Caitlin Moss Outdoors, and I think maybe my TikTok is Caitlin Moss Outdoors, but I don't really post on there as much because TikTok doesn't like hunting. Um, and then Instagram. <laughs> don't we know it? <laughs> yeah. Instagram and Facebook's just Caitlin Moss. So just my name. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we're really excited that we got to do this. Like sitting down, having like a face-to-face conversation means a lot more to me than like over a Zoom. So I'm kind of happy that it didn't go. Yeah. yeah. Cause then we can like do this. Yeah. Yeah. I like this better. It's a lot <laughs> better, but, um, we really appreciate you coming by and, yeah. um, we're, we're excited to, to potentially work together in the future a little bit more. So yeah. Everybody, do you have anything else? Anything I, I missed? So. No, I don't think so. This is day one. Day one. Of the NWTF. It's going to be a three-day <laughs> banger. And uh, if you're watching this, go see Caitlin, come see us, and have a great day, everybody. See you later. See you.